taped for broadcast due to either technical reasons discussion that may be held in closed session. Pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, there may be interruptions in the videotaping of these proceedings. This meeting will be aired by EHT TV Channel 97 on September 21st. Thank you, ma'am. Roll call. Uh, please stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Joe Cafaro. Here. Ray Ellis. Here. Paul Hodson. Here. Joe Donahue. Present. Laura Farmer. I am here. We're going to go a little out of order. Um, we have resolution uh, 389, and we are appointing a police chaplain for the calendar year 2023. Does it end in December? Was going to reappoint in January, Chief? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to swear him. But first, I need someone to make a motion to. I make that motion. I'll second it. Thank you. Roll call. Cafaro. Yes. Alice. Yes. Yeah. Hodson. Yep. O'Donoghue. Yes. Farmer. Absolutely. Chief. You want to come up too? I gotta bring this. With me. I hope I get the name again. Would you like to tell us about the chaplain? Um, this is uh, Chaplain. I'm not sure of your last name. I want to throw it. At your uh, yes, sir, or uh, Chaplain Burton, if you come up. So, um, he is a member of your church, which is the New Life Center. New Life Center. Um, the, the good thing with Chaplain Echeverria <laughs> is he's bilingual. And. No, he would, yeah. All right. Um, having a bilingual chaplain uh, to join our ranks uh, and, uh, and as an honorary captain of our agency uh, is going to hopefully pay dividends especially with the Hispanic community um, and I think it needs to be said that a lot of times our chaplains once just like our dispatchers when I was here last time these are the people behind the scenes that are doing some of the unsavory work um, and what I mean by that is our chaplains serve such an important function um, in the community when we have to do anything from like the death notification or some type of traumatic incident involved our, our, our citizens. Um, we introduce our chaplains to that, to that environment to, to meet with loved ones, um, especially because that's what they are you know, trained to do and to, to bring that faith-based um, side to a tragedy. A tragedy. And uh, so when our office, I can't tell you how much that assists our officers. You know, when, when they're dealing with the investigation, that's the result of the tragedy. Where our chaplains just are able to step in and deal with the, the emotional trauma. And uh, so that's why it's very important to have a, uh, someone who's bilingual um, for our Hispanic population. Mm -hmm. so. And we thank you. We thank you. This is a tough job. Three, well, actually, four people up here are law enforcement and have seen a lot of things. And what you all do is a service to the public that we can't thank you enough for. We have to swear them in. We have to swear them in. So, do you want to hold it for him? I'll read it from here and you can hold it for him. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Left hand on the Bible. No. Raise your right and put your left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. Left hand on the Bible. Oh, I say that wrong. Yes. Yeah. I, just repeat after me, please. I, I state your name. Edwin, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully impartially, impartially, and justly. Just perform all the duties perform all the duties of the uh, office of police chaplain, of the office of police chaplain to, the best of my ability. to the best of my ability. I do further solemnly swear, I do further solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, the Constitution of the State of New Jersey 
and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the government established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people. So help me God. Thank you. You're in. Pastor, you want to say anything? Pastor, do you want to say anything? Or you just want to introduce yourself a little bit? No, I just consider it an honor and privilege to serve. I really I realize the importance of what I'm going to be doing. I uh, have faced uh, many challenges, particularly with deaths in my family in, in all different levels. I know how important it is to uh, have someone there that would uh, be an encouragement and uh, maybe someone uh, spiritual that would um, help those in need at that time. You know, it's, it's a, I, like I said, from my personal experience, it's there's critical times, and when you are faced with the tragedy, um, that's a critical time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it's going to be an honor and privilege to be part of that. And we're honored to have you. Thank you. Hey, uh, excuse me, Mayor. I like to say something. I didn't know him. He didn't know me, but I know he's a man of God. This past Sunday, I was in church at his church, and he prayed for me for my back, and I was moving after he prayed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Pastor, it's important for the community, you know. It's important for our community. Más importante for the community Latino. More important for the Latin community. Porque nadie aquí tiene mucha gente aquí no habla inglés. We have a lot of people here that don't speak English. And for me, for my family, Dios te bendiga. For me and my family, I want to thank you and God bless you. Thank you. And I'm Irish, by the way. <laughs> you did really good on that job. <laughs> okay. You have two interpreters tonight. All righty. You know, once in a while, we get to do wonderful things in this room. And, and luckily, in the last couple of weeks, we've had quite a few. But we have something that we're going to present a young man with in just a minute for a perfect game in baseball. Now we've got some baseball fans out here. Paul's checking the score right wow. now. So it's like... <laughs> The Phillies won tonight. So, well, they got a pitcher. How many years can you be like playing for the Phillies? But where did arm out? You did something that even the people in Cooperstown were blown away by. And I know the people of this town. Uh, Paul Weldon reached out to us and said, "This incredible event happened. You have to honor this young man and recognize him." And that's what our intention to do tonight is. So. Uh, Deputy Mayor Cafaro is going to read this. I'm going to. Sure. I'd like you to come forward. You can come forward with your family if you want, or you just yourself. I think you're a star. You can come. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, we'd like to just read a little bit about your background. We have a certificate of commendation presented to you with pride. Stephen Foster is a left-handed pitcher for the South Jersey Sand Sharks. Throughout the spring of 23, Stephen was 9-0 and in games pitched for the South Jersey Sand Sharks. His batting average was 577. Uh, he had 31 home runs, eight of which were in Cooperstown. You were on fire. On Monday, August 7, 2023, Stephen pitched a perfect game in the Elite Eight versus the number one seeded team, the Carolina Titans. Stephen threw a total of 61 pitches in the game. <coughs> Pardon me. With 49 pitches being strikes, Stephen struck out 12 batters from the no number one Carolina Titans. Stephen is also the second base player for the, New for the New Jersey to throw a perfect game, is the second baseball player from New Jersey to throw a perfect game in Cooperstown. That's an elite class. The Township Committee is proud to recognize Stephen for his prestigious accomplishments and the honor he has brought to himself his family, and his coaches in his effort to achieve a, a record success. We congratulate Stephen and offer our best wishes for a future filled with happiness and continued success. Congratulations.
you want to tell us what was going through your mind as you're nine <laughs> minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I had it until I got it. You didn't know you had it? No. <laughs> We're counting pictures then, huh? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Made it easier that way. <laughs> so was the umpire on your side? Yeah. Okay. That's good. <laughs> he, he he didn't coach you though, right? <laughs> he tried to take credit. You're getting good calls from the umpire. That helps you. <laughs> so you started at baseball, and now you're with the Sharks. Mm -hmm. And when do you go to high school? Uh, next year. Wow. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. good. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> That's awesome. Who taught you how to pitch? Oh. Oh, there you oh, go. Man. I thought you did that. <laughs> I thought they were grandpa. Yeah. Got to bring his coach up. What does that make baseball want to be? That's fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. Everybody fabulous. taught him how to throw clams. Well, you want to bring the coach. Absolutely. Wait, come up. up. Okay. Yeah. Come, on up, come on up, coach. Come on, coach. Coach. Come on up. Oh, coach. Coach. Yeah. Coach. Uh, just that he's had been a wonderful player. He's a wonderful young man. He works hard. He's a great teammate. Everything about him is awesome. So, really, uh, the kind of person you want on your team, hundred percent. Wow, no, that's great. That's wonderful. Good stuff. That's wonderful. Wonderful. But We're where so would proud. we be without our coaches, right? Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? <laughs> so you coached a good young man, gave him fundamentals that took him to where it's taking him. Yeah. So when he gets to the high school next year. We can't wait to come out and see you, bud. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait. So, but again, congratulations from all of us. Congratulations, <laughs> and uh, hope we see you back here for another board. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank Good job. You so much. Thank you. Now, if you have family members that would like to see this tomorrow, it's on Channel 97 tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, so you can see. Thank you. And is there somewhere online we can see that the end of that game at least? Or Ooh, I have the Thank video. You, Appreciate it. There's an email address or somewhere I can send it. I can definitely do that. That would be great to see. Yeah. Janice, is there? Can we have a spot that can take a video like that? You might be able to edit it and just like clip the last inning. Mm -hmm. That would be perfect if you could. Where would I send it to you? Here. Here's my card. My email address okay. is right on there. And I'll make right. sure it gets in the right hands. Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thank you. Perfect game. Yeah. Have you guys pitch it? Yeah. That's a beautiful story. I had to ask if he knew, oh, yeah. you know, because I can't imagine if you know, you know, it's like, it's yeah. like, yeah, she like, yeah, just, he picked a hitter, not a no hitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have got a public hearings, hearing on Ordinance 27. Mr. Friedman. Thank you, Mayor. Or Ordinance 27 is an ordinance to amend the code of the Township of Bay Harbor, Chapter 165, entitled Parks and Recreation Areas, specifically Section 165-3, entitled Hours. The purpose of Ordinance 27 of 2023 is to amend Chapter 165-3B uh, by establishing the hours for the pickleball courts located at MK Betterment Park. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak on ordinance number 27? Seeing none, can I have a motion to close the public portion? So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Cafaro. Yes. Alice. Yes. Hodson. Yes. O'Donoghue. Yes. Farmer. Yes. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance number 27? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Roll call. Cafaro. Yes. Alice. Yes. Hodson. Yes. O'Donoghue. Yes. Farmer. Yes. Ordinance 28, Mr. Friedman. Just one thing. Last night at a quarter to 10, every court was filled last night. Yep. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And the cars are parked there. It, it really was great. I pulled over and watched them play, and I couldn't believe it. every court was filled. And I guess the lights go out at 10. They got a 10. So they're waiting for the lights to go out. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Ordinance 28, Mr. Friedman. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance 28 is an ordinance amending Ordinance 2 of 2022 by fixing the salaries of certain officials and employees of the Policemen's Benevolent Association of the Township of Vague Harbor for the year 2023. 
The purpose of this ordinance is to amend the 2023 PBA salaries pursuant to the Memorandum of Understanding reached with the PBA Mainland Local 77 dated July 26, 2023. Thank you. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on ordinance number 28? Seeing none, can I have a motion to close? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Roll call. Cafaro. Yes. Ellis. Yes. Hudson. Yes. O'Donohue. Yes. Farmer. Yes. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance number 28? I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank you. Roll call. Cafaro. Yes. Ellis. Yes. Hudson. Yes. O'Donohue. Yes. Farmer. Yes. Uh, is there anybody in the public that would like to discuss anything with the governing body? If so, could you just come forward to the mic? Good evening. We're back, and I feel kind of bad because you know I have another gripe. <laughs> Where's he continued after such? Joy, can you take that mic and flip it back towards you? The it does. There you go. Perfect. Um, after all the good stuff that just happened. Um, there's a lot of things that we can go over with most of the stuff we've already mentioned to council. Our main concern, Where? at least for me, um, some of the residents, well, the only ones left are us, but um, on Friday afternoon, we had a major water break behind one of the homes. And it ran down the street the entire weekend before they fixed it, even though they knew about it. I'd like to show you the video if I could, okay. Um, so we all had, yes, so everyone did have water on the weekends. In, in a couple of the streets, yes, right there. we had very, very low pressure. There we had a resident here who had out of town company, mm -hmm. it was very difficult to shower. We have another resident here that can speak for her health self that just had back surgery. And because of water condition, and of course the note that we get about boiling your water and don't do this and don't do that, she, yeah, here's, here's what we get afterwards. You know, she just had back surgery, so for her to sufficiently shower the way she should. Just wait till she's done. But they knew about it Friday afternoon. They told a couple residents that they were going to reach out and get a hold of a plumber. So all weekend. We had no pressure. It was very difficult to shower, do dishes, and a lot of people do the laundry on the weekend. Wasn't that happening? So Monday they had the plumber come out <coughs> to repair that. Were you able to see that everything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, did anybody else Can you see this? Send it I down. came over your shoulder and looked Oh, you did see it? Okay. Uh, then yesterday we had a second break. So they fixed this one uh, Monday. And Tuesday, same street, couple houses down, we had another break. So this is galvanized pipe. Yes. It's compromised. Yes. We're replacing it with patch jobs for plastic. They have in the past. I yes. mean, that's what happened in this case? You, you told well, me? this one, they, they actually got a plumber. So we replaced replace the galvanized? We're, yeah, the, the one that was behind her house, actually, which is the one that I'm showing you with the video, I think they did six feet of whatever kind of pipe that they did. But this is, I mean, this is my, la my list from last year. This is like 13 different breaks that affected, and I can only speak for our street. Our street. I don't know about the rest of the community because I just don't know. But this, this was 13 times. In June of this year, we had three days where we didn't have water. Well, turn it on at night, you have no pressure, then they, go, they turn it off the next day. So this water issue is becoming huge. And according to the Rent Review Board, um, meaning that we had in July, when they had their engineers get up, they said that six homes were already done. We have no idea where that is, because we haven't seen that kind of work done. It could have happened in a section of the park that we're not aware of, we don't know. Have you contacted landlord-tenant? Because that's... It's not, how, we don't understand how it's landlord-tenant A and B. We have before, and they said like a year before they're gonna be able to do anything. They're talking about doing 10%, replacing 10% of the pipes. There's 222 homes. That's going to take them to 2031. Mm -hmm. 
So it's seven more years. Yeah, they only do 10%. We have 228, 22 homes, 228. And the only saving grace in that is if they did it all in one year, they would assess you the capital improvement fee of a $10 million project over the course. That, if that's what they said it was the cost of the project's $10 million? Or what's the cost of the project? I have no idea. Oh, and that's the other thing, Mike. Like, because they never properly fixed them in the past. And now the state says you have 10 years to replace all these right. pipes. Is that something that's going to get passed on to the residents? I would think this is a capital improvement. I don't know. That's why you really got to talk to an attorney. You truly do, because this is beyond our scope. And there's issues here. No water is a huge issue. And continual no water is an issue. And this is something that has to go, an attorney's going to have to get involved and help you because you need help. There's no doubt about it. Everyone up here knows this. Has, have you tried calling landlord-tenant again? Has anybody called them at all in the last month or so? You Call the them. number? You have the number, right, for landlord-tenant? 609. Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. 609-345-6700. As to speak to landlord tenant special civil part, you can file what's called pro se. Mm -hmm. That means self representing. And if the judge or whoever hears the case decides that you've been offended or you have a loss or you have something, they can assess fines to the landlord. That is really the only remedy you have right now? Is that? Mayor, they should also call South Jersey Legal. Have you tried South Jersey Legal? They're so, they're so backed up. Well, you know, ma'am, the whole too. country's busy and they need to help you with this. This is a health issue. So if you you approach it like that with them, I'm just saying, anybody disagrees? Mm -hmm. Council, you disagree with that? No, I mean, we've uh, disseminated this advice in the past here that uh, the uh, as a tenant paying rent for your pad site, you're no different than a tenant living in an apartment right. someplace. Mm -hmm. It's really it's a private matter that mm -hmm. requires uh, legal action that either a judge making a decision and with the assistance of Cape Atlantic Legal Services, whether they're backed up or they're not backed up, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And we'd like to be able to, this committee would like to give you the grease to make things happen, but don't have the power to do so. How about as far as um, a cap? on the rent, uh, which is what we originally came to council about. Um, well, again, uh, the, the <coughs> CPI increase that they got was a statutory increase that they're allowed to get. Uh, if they come in for a rent increase based upon improvements, capital improvements, they're allowed to get a rent increase. So you are not without remedies but the remedies that you need have to come by way of a court order. If you, you know, and I'm not, I can't disseminate legal advice to you as to what you can or couldn't do, but there are tools at your disposal and legal counsel, even if they say they can't represent you in court right now, they should be able to give you a consultation on what can be done in the interim until they could follow a formal case. So. Is there anything that prevents, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to be able to phrase this correct, for instance, when we went to the rent review board meeting in December or whenever it was, and there was an issue with the fence, and they said to the, the owners, replace the broken sections, and instead they took the entire thing down and, re, and put a brand new one up for $86,000. Now, that's going to get thrown into CPI that we're going to have to pay for when they do the next rent increase versus what I believe would be maintenance if they just, you know, repair the section. So they, they do things that just constantly improves the value of their property. I get it, they're in business. But then you hit something like this where we didn't really have water for the weekend and like, that's okay. And they could have called a plumber. The plumber that they use works on the weekends. CPI increases are based on rate of inflation. I know, yes. It has nothing to do with the money that they spend on capital improvements. So what you say would have some more validity if, in fact, they were coming in for rent increase based upon capital improvements that they made. 
which they do. That's well, at least the last go round of the rent increase was not based upon capital improvements. So, um, but that's included in there, isn't it? No, it's a, it's over no, and above. It's based upon an assessment. It's based upon inflationary Sources. factors, cost of living, not based upon the dollars and cents that they are spending on the park. Well, then how come that's always an included assessment. in with the paperwork they for rent increases? Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the paperwork, and I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> I know that there's certain grounds and applications that they make for coming in for rent increases. Capital improvements being one, CPI is another one. So there's a separate set of factors that are considered when setting the rent. And if it's just the CPI increase, then that's what they look for. We have spoken with members of the, or the chairman of the Rent Review Board about your situation, other situations as well. And they say that, you know, sometimes we ask the landlords based upon the complaints that we receive to address certain problems, we don't really have the leverage to make them do it, uh, but uh, they they seize on the opportunity to try to get them to, to do it. Uh, and obviously if they go overboard and spend more money than they needed to, that's a landlord determination to make. Ma'am, come on up. Can we just get your uh, name and address just, for the record? Just How one thing, I know it, it's going on death ears, but I think Fred Spano, our chief's here, in the past, there, I recall where water was trucked into English Creek Manor, if not the one on Ocean Heights, right, Fred, where they had their water? They brought in water supply. And water is a basic need. Yes, so somebody has to light a fire through the system that they they have to provide water, okay? You know, they trucked it in to English Creek Manor, I believe. Not only provide water, but you. the- uh, Joy, do you need this? The, the landlord. Uh, it was my house that was broken and I just had surgery. I had ACDF surgery, um, a discectomy and then they did fusion and blah, 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 blah. He just told me that, you know, eh, well, I guess I got to do my job, huh? And he goes, they're not going to come out anytime soon. So, you know, just so you know, blah, blah, blah. I ended up digging a trench to get the water out from under my house. I had to do it all by myself. My husband was at work. There's nobody around, so I'm 10 days post op digging a trench. She actually came out and saw me and everything like that. But I digress. The capital, the capital improvement. I get that and understand that, but I do know that per order, it depends on the area you're in. Can go from standard like two to six percent, but they got me for 8.2 percent this year. That's where I'm going. Why can't we have a cap as well? That's what CPI was this year. Mm -hmm. Was eight point ten. Yes. Yeah. That's why this year was really. But what bad. about like the okay in Elmer they have a cap of I think they can't go over six percent. Well, according to ordinance now we have the, the risk on that. According right now the rate is per CPI per our ordinance. The risk about changing that is there have been years where it's been one percent, a half a percent and they didn't get an increase or they got a half a percent increase? From what I understand, this park has gotten an increase and the, the only time year. they didn't get, except during COVID, it was like 0.4 or something. I just moved in. Okay, yeah. So uh, the remedy that you have really is noise. You call legal services. Call the number that Commitment O'Donoghue gave you because he, he understands this world and he knows that those are the people you call, we all know this, you call that number, not once, not twice. Every day. Every day. You have a record, and I know you have a record of all the deficiencies over the last few months or the last probably few years. You have that already, and maintain that list, but call legal services. Right. Every single process. day. Every single day you've got to call because if you don't make noise, they're not going to call you back. If we go in pro se, their lawyers are going to just stomp us into the dirt. Well, what I would say to you is Cape Atlantic Legal Service could present you as a joint case in, involving everybody. That's really what you really need. And it's, you know, they represent individual cases. So Every, we can even go in pro se and then call if, to a midway and say we need As long as you can get, as long as you can get Cape Atlantic, you can start the process pro se. Listen, if you really wanted to, you could all individually claim what your losses are, present it to the court on an individual basis, 
you know, it inundates the court. I'm not one to recommend that, but uh, certainly you could. But my recommendation is Cape Atlantic. They, they handle cases like this, and they have, and they have a pretty good team. Yes, they're overworked, but so is the court, and so is the whole entire system, as we all know. Look at our police departments, our everything. It's just the way it is, folks. That's the country now. But if you're persistent enough and consistent in what you say, the person's right now. Yeah. well, yeah, <laughs> and and if you do that, somebody's going to listen, and and you don't have to stop there. There's they have bosses too. It goes all the way to Trenton, mm -hmm. and I've seen time and time again, people who are persistent, consistent, and have validity, get their cases heard, and I think counsel would agree with me. I, it's a it's a remedy civilly that hurts them in the pocket so that gets their attention and again i'm not giving you legal advice i'm just telling you where to go to get the legal advice you need we want to help you that's why we're giving you this advice we're sympathetic to your cause we are we talk about it after you were gone yeah so we all know we all have families and for 900 dollars a month for a trailer you think i'd have to save for water to, to wash my incisions <laughs> you would yes, but i know you have the documentation i know members of the park have documentation of things that have gone down. Take the advice. Okay. Call there over and over and over again. All right. So I would absolutely do that. All right. All right. Cat. We hear you. <laughs> Is there anybody else Thank that would like to speak on that issue? Thank you for listening to us again. Our pleasure. Yes, That's our job. Our job. Yeah. Is there anyone else that would like to address a governing body? Yes, we have an individual. Okay. Okay. Can she come up and give her name and address for the record, please? interpreter addressing two lovely individuals. It just might take me a minute. Um, I just need to ascertain the specific type of language she prefers. Okay. It's informed it's not ASL. Oh, okay. Signed English. Which do you, so sh, do you want signed English to you or do you want ASL? You're going to use your voice? Okay, with me. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to ask which language you prefer. Are you going to voice for yourself or you want me to voice for you? <clears throat> use my voice. I'll try to use my okay. voice. Uh, my name is Rhonda Addict. And I can use a man in a dress for uh, PO Box 4644, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. And we need a, a residence. I don't live in the town. Still. Excuse me? Still. We still need a, re a address. You want me to give an address from this town? Correct. Where she no. lives? No, where she, she lives? lives? Where does she live? Well, where do you actually I live? I don't live in this town. Okay. Okay. I need a visitor here. Other than a P.O. box. They need a real... That's the address I use. I'm sorry if you don't accept it. That's the address I use. It affects your credibility, I suppose. You know, then a meeting. Last week, oh, September 18th. September 18th, I think. I don't know. Recently. It's always the same format. You stand up, you give a name, you give an address. Never been a problem before. 
Yes, so normally uh, it is a I'm not sure why it should be a problem. Well, there's a couple of things. First off, you have asked us, based upon your uh, disability, if you want to call it that, to have an interpreter here, and yet you're conversing with us. Now, the interpreters here at a time and expense of the township were trying to accommodate you. Do we need to be going through this time and expense of an interpreter, ma'am? Question or why did I ask for an interpreter for here tonight's speech? That's the question. Yes. Well, I've got a little horse right now, but it's a good thing I can I can think on my feet. So, first the issue is the address. Second issue is I asked for the ADA accommodation to attend tonight's meeting. Interpreter, right? You did. Um, I left my ADA technical assistance books in my car. I'm referring to Title II, state and local government, Title III, public accommodation. If an individual under qualified disability would like to equally and effectively participate in activity, it's a policy that they would contact somebody or they want to attend that activity and request the accommodation that they're seeking to attend that activity. How was the interpreter being of assistance to you? Right, so then, you wanna know how the interpreter helps me? Right, we are having a discussion right now. So, you've never seen interpreters communicate for the deaf? You see sometimes on TV, they're standing near the president. You see live news. You've never seen interpreters talk to that? I have, but you're the speaker tonight. You're confused because I'm speaking using my voice? Let's move beyond that. Question, are you a resident? Sorry, of sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, he's confused because I'm using my voice. He thinks that I need, he think, thinks that I need the interpreters to do everything for me. That what you're thinking? I'm asking the question, I don't know. You, you can educate me. Well, I can educate him. Well, I'm used to a five minute public comment thing where you have to just squeeze everything in and you know if you want me to educate you I went to it I'm a graduate of Gallaudet University in Washington DC the only liberal arts college in the world for the day my classes were in total communication I mean they were signing and talking at the same time called total communication so I arrived at Gallaudet in 1979, and I graduated in 1981. Then I went to the Deaf Olympics. So my background started off as hearing, and over time I became deaf. A lot of variation on a deaf spectrum, just like an autism spectrum. There's a lot of variation. Okay. As is if you feel that this interpreter is assisting you in communicating with the governing body, then let's move on from that. That's that's fine. Ma'am, what brought you here? I apologize for arriving late. Hmm? I did drive a little bit far, but I apologize for arriving late. You are not late. You're just on time. Question. Your meetings start pretty early for a council meeting. 5.30 is the earliest. I've ever seen six, six thirty, I think seven, five thirty. Okay, ma'am. If you'd like to state the reason why you're here. It interrupted my happy hour. I mean that'd be funny. <laughs> I don't go to happy hour. <laughs> anyway, the reason why I came here because 
I've already had some experiences here in Egg Harbor Township at public accommodation, you know, stored, and here at the township. And while it's not surprising, it's still hard to believe when the township doesn't make itself aware of the ADA and the New Jersey law against discrimination and bring itself up to date. I don't know if anybody's aware, but the New Jersey law against discrimination, our civil rights law, was the first law in the United States before other states adopted it. Most state civil rights laws came before our federal ADA. But our Jersey state law covers about 18 categories. Race was the first category going all the way back to 1945. They added breastfeeding with the last amendment 2018. But then in 2022, they updated the posters. When your labor law posters get updated, no discrimination appointment, the family leave act, it's a good opportunity to look and see all the posters that apply to your township, because they could have been updated too. So they changed the look of the posters. This time around, they even wrote, including police departments, on the poster. The New Jersey law against discrimination always applied to the police department. It's not that they have to write it on the post, but they did. There's probably been a lot of complaints. And when they had the opportunity to change the poster, this is what they did. They added a new section for medical posters or six to choose from. It even applies to the new medical marijuana dispensary. So I came into this town. The posters went up at the township. Faced with discrimination out there, and that's how I met your police department. So my first choice was to meet with the ADA coordinator for the township, have a sit-down meeting with an interpreter, and discuss what my grievance was. But it was August 8th, and I never received a reply back. So after a month later, I came back to the township. It was frustrating. And then I decided I would come to the meeting instead. But you know, there's a big difference between a five minute public comment and, you know, a sit down, which could go an hour or longer. But this was my choice. I don't know really anything about anybody here, but. As a deaf person, I say to myself, nobody here needed me to tell the township that the posters had to be up. Nobody. Why? Because even though I advocate, I feel that somebody here should already know. I don't know who's in charge of it. Who's ever in charge of putting the labor law posters up, which is important for your employee. No discrimination employment. The family leave actors on Fort Lawn. Maybe they should have looked at everything that applied. I don't know why the township never got auxiliary aids and services for the deaf. I don't know why these hadn't happened, but they're very common. It's viral across New Jersey. So here we have a state, first state in the United States to adopt a civil rights law. But everybody knows that something on paper does not necessarily transcend to an everyday reality. I've seen places that have a poster up, you can still get discriminated against because they stuck a poster up, and they don't even know what it means. I've seen this plenty of times. In fact, that's what sparked my interest in the poster back in 2009. I never started advocating until six years later, 15. Then the mayor has a sign up in New York in the building that they welcome ideas and suggestions. 
and the deaf are referred to as hearing impaired. I grew up with that term, hearing impaired. But it's been years since somebody at the New Jersey Division of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing told me, we want deaf and hard of hearing. That's why if you go to courthouses, you'll see the notice to the deaf and hard of hearing. You don't see hearing impaired. I'm sure nobody means anything by it, but the deaf became sensitive and pain. We're not impaired. We're deaf, we're hard of hearing. So, I don't know how large the deaf community is here in Egg Harbor Township. I have no idea what incidents came before myself. But since I've had these incidents, I, I see a need for improvement. And in some ways, it's not a hard thing to do. Get video remote interpreting, get have access to an interpreter 24-7. But you don't pay for the contract to sign up with an interpreting agency. You only pay when the service due. And those people who will set you up for BRI, they also have access to in-person interpreters when you need it. It's not a hard thing to do. It just seemed like no one ever gave it any mind. And then I come into the situation and I'm like, this town's like this, this town's like this. And I say, have some good laws, but you can't really partake in the laws because you're always having to stand up for these laws because nobody's paying attention. So it's just like a catch-22 situation. Well, you go for um, I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention. Yes, there you go, sir. And I, I guess you would believe in if you don't succeed the first time you try, try again. And I'm glad you did. This community seeks for perfection in following the laws that are on the books, as we should. This community, what? This community wants to follow the law? Yes. You have how many public accommodations, stores, in, in this community. You have to start someplace, and if that means the governing body and its police department <coughs> and, the, and, and the different departments that fall under the municipal umbrella. When you mean this community, you mean the Walmarts and your medical and everything that comprises this community? We'll start with town hall. because I might have to meet with your eye department. You may hear a town hall want to comply, but your community, your Walmarts, and they will use your plea for the wrong reasons to make it even harder for somebody with a disability to get good services. So the community at large, I think I only know one business that has a poster of an Harbor Township, maybe two, that's it. Well, maybe it's gonna require an education program to try to get the rest of the community and businesses of the community to be compliant. An advocate like yourself can serve a useful purpose in doing that. I just want to say one last thing. I believe that prior to this law being passed, it started with race. Somebody of race could have gone to a grocery store, or any type of store to get goods and services. The business called the police department and make them leave because of race alone. Does anyone ever remember a time like that? That's why they started the law. Seemed like, I mean, I would have to go back and research old newspapers from 1945, 55, 60, and see, you know, the intent of the law. 
But as people slowly got the idea that they could no longer just point the finger and not serve somebody based on race, maybe please stop doing it. But now somebody like under disability is a target, and I still feel people race still are a target. In many ways, it hasn't stopped. And I have an expression. Discrimination is never a solo act. It's enabled by others. Does that make any sense? You have started the first step of enlightening us. I think that police can play an important role when they come to a business and they're saying they want to remove a deaf person. I think some things can be done to Stop that. I really do. Well, I'm not sure if you're talking about a hypothetical or an actual incident. Did you? Talking about something that's happened? I've already been in Buffalo. He said, I'm not sure if you're talking about a fake incident or something that's really happened. I'm talking about real incidents that I've been involved in. In Egg Harbor Township. I'm talking about real incidents, and I see how businesses will contact the police. The drop of a hat, the police come, and from my observation, out here is my observation, the businesses serve these police, the, the police serve these businesses, will do anything they want, and they don't try to stop this when it's in progress, and I think the police can turn it around when they go on scene. I mean, a crime is a crime, but it's not a crime to be deaf and say, I need a writing to get service. It's not a crime to say, Walmart, you need to post for us. But this is what's happening. And if we seem to think can use the police and our services to remove somebody for really no reason at all. Okay, no. It's no different than how they did it to race. Ma'am, thank you. We appreciate you coming tonight and educating us. Education is power. And we will strive to make Town Hall as ADA compliant as possible. And we wish you all the best. Thank you for coming. She have a copy of that. We can get... We can... Could you relate to anything I said? Could you relate... I mean, if you have a grandfather, grandmother, could you relate, do you understand the importance of this law and how it's meant for people to get equal access to and enjoyment of goods and services, free of discrimination, free of harassment? The mayor is going to address that and make sure it's up. We will make sure, but we want to thank you. We have to move on with business, but we want to thank you for coming tonight. <clears throat> Have a good night. Is there anyone else that would like to address the governing body? Seeing none, can I have a motion I'll to close? Motion. Thank you. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Okay, we have resolution. We already did 389. We have resolutions 390 through and including 401. Does everybody have any, any questions or can I have a motion? I'll make a motion for the resolution calendar. I'll second it. Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Kefaro? Yes. Ellis? Ellis? <laughs> yes. Hodson? Yes. O'Donohue? Yes. Farmer? Yes. Resolution 402, authorizing the payment of all bills. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Thank you, sir. Second. Thank you. Roll call? Kefaro? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Hodson? Yes. O'Donohue? Yes. Farmer? Yes. Township Committee reports. Mr. O'Donohue. Wow. Um, well, once again, our police department was on the job. Um, I happened to be in Lowe's. There was an incident with somebody in drug abuse. And unfortunately, I'm in Lowe's and Home Depot a lot because of my business. And we have a lot of shoplifting going on. Our police department's extremely accommodative to these stores and, and our, I, I can't tell you the job they have. There's a term 
out here that is referred to when somebody is on drugs and that's and uncontrollable and that's exactly what occurred while her partner was in the store attempting to shoplift um and uh, i was right in the middle of it store manager got me and our police department came and relieved me of that chain chief i have to tell you they were right on the job um they were excellent in their response and excellent and kind in their dealing with the person who was completely out of control jumping on car roofs and running around the parking lot um this we have to be diligent. We have to be diligent as citizens. We have to support our police. We have to support our agency. We have to support our community. And if we don't, we are going to be facing what places like New York City are facing and not so far right in this county. And I don't wanna keep naming certain towns, but we all know what's going on in this county. It's horrific. And Egg Harbor Township is a great place to live. I, I say this all the time, I, our police department's phenomenal. So once again, they were quick, swift to the response, and the community is appreciative of that, Chief. Thank you. And I do think the Attorney General has to look at some of the laws that they Abs passed. Absolutely, we have, and I wanna warn everybody about car thefts, Mayor. We have a car theft ring in this county that's outrageous. There have been, including a local councilman's car was in the process of being stolen. Councilwoman, her car was being stolen. The pursuit was in excess of 95 to 100 miles an hour down Shore Road. And the attorney general guidelines came into play. And recently, as you know, another total different incident, it wound up in Delaware uh, from a stolen car here. We have to be diligent, folks. It's, it's not uh, happy days anymore, it's just not. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ellis. Um, <laughs> Why are you picking on the breath? <laughs> I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Public Work. Uh, the Little League football field, the township field, is, um, the Public Works went out there, cut the grass, cleaned it up. They did a great job. Um, EMT on the side of this football game, the guy was there the whole day. And I just wanted to give a shout out to, like I said, Public Works, EMT, and all the workers here in the town. Thank you. Mr. Hudson. A couple things. One, uh, our fire department participated in Wildwood this past weekend. The Bargain Town's uh, uh, pumper was recognized and awarded. Um, so that's a big event every year. It used to be the Trenton Speedway. I'm going way back. It's in Wildwood. So to our firemen that went down there for the five companies, uh, congratulations. Also to remind everybody, as you can see, the signs are up. The Scoville Fire Department is starting the Hornet Hayride. I think it's this weekend is the first weekend. Thanks. I think it is because it's the end of the month. And it's a big fundraiser for them and the organizations that help them. And to uh, Harry Fleming for helping them every year. Uh, with the hayride, it's a good <clears throat> fundraiser for Scoville Fire Department. That's it. Mr. Thank you. Hi. Uh, just to our citizens, I want to... Is this still the public part, or have you done... We're done. That's session? closed. Please. Now you're closed. Yeah, we're closed to the public. We're winding up the meeting. Okay, then I am going to make my exit because it's a closed meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being here. Yes, uh, Saturday is the first day of fall, and um, I know our Nature Reserve Committee has done a lot of work out there. The place is looking beautiful. Um, this is a wonderful time of year, crisp mornings and uh, pleasant afternoons. Uh, please, you know, take advantage of it. It's a great thing. It's a positive, and I hope everybody enjoys it. And uh, as the colors change, you'll get to see those beautiful colors thank you Lord. it's a beautiful place i love it there i just want to give a uh, big thank you to the farmington fire company for hosting the 9 11 ceremony we all were there and it was very touching it was something that we will never forget and we can never forget and we need to every year honor that day as a sacred day in this country and they did an outstanding job so i just wanted to thank them for that and that is all i have mark tom do you have anything to say i believe we have a closed session i'm good that's it just okay. closed. gotta put the glasses back on 
Okay. Approvals. Can I have a motion to approve the departmental reports for the month of August? Favor. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have closed session. Madam Clerk, do you want to read the closed session? Uh, actually, uh, that would be Tom. Yes, Tom will read. I have some additions to That's what you right. guys have. Uh -huh. And there is a possibility of coming out of closed and taking action, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, resolution 403. Resolution authorizing Township Committee to convene into closed executive session to discuss matters which may involve personnel and or legal matters. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the governing body wishes to discuss matters involving personnel and or legal matters as follows. Personnel, an EMS personnel update, anticipated disclosure six months, a police department personnel update, anticipated disclosure six months, um, legal, uh, insurance fund re renewal, anticipated disclosure six months. We have one sale of township property, uh, 2105, lots five and eight, anticipated disclosure six months, and the potential property donation to the township, anticipated disclosure six months. Okay. Whereas minutes will be kept, and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires that confidentiality, then the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Egg Harbor, County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey, that the public be excluded from this meeting. Can I have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Second. Roll call. Cafaro. Yes. Alice. Yes. Hodson. Yes. Donahue. Yes. Farmer. Yes.